Ah, Spyro the Dragon, one of my all-time favorite platformers of all time. Now, I can't tell you how many times I have 100 percent of this game, whether it was on Xbox, PS5, PC, or even the original on the PS1 back when it was released in 1998. But we are not talking about that game. We are talking about the newest recent release being the Reignited Trilogy, which came back out in 2018, containing all three of the original PS1 games. Now, just a quick few things to mention before we get into it. Now, as much as this is my first ever Platinum vid on the channel, this 100% was actually completed on PC and the main reason for that is the FPS since the PlayStation version of this game is actually capped at 30 FPS whereas for PC it caps at 60. Now although in this day and age the standard in gaming is about 100 FPS plus for most people going from 30 to 60 is a massive difference and even though I tested both I just couldn't stick to the PlayStation so it looks like we're going Steam achievement hunting for this video. Another thing to mention is that for the concept of this video since it is my first one I'll be going through every trophy slash achievement in the order that I obtained them whilst also talking about minor story points here and there. Now this isn't the most story driven game in the world but for future games where the story is more focused on I'll be talking more about that alongside the trophies. But obviously if you've played any of the Spyro games there isn't that much of a story to it so we won't really be focusing on that as much. Now let's not waste any more time, welcome to the Platinum Hunt. So the game starts off with some of the Elder Dragons being interviewed, answering some questions about the main villain of the game. Meet Nasty Nork. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple? Obviously no one likes getting called ugly. He is ugly. Ugly? So in retaliation he turns all of the dragons into crystal statues apart from our purple hero which I never really understood why Spyro wasn't affected. Maybe it's because he's a younger dragon so he wasn't seen as much of a threat but don't worry Nasty we will change that very soon. We get thrown straight into our first of six hub worlds being the artisan lands. Now, unlike Spyro 2 and 3, each level can be fully completed without having to do any sort of backtracking, hence why this is the easiest out of the 3 to 100%. So, the main three items that we are looking out for are the dragon statues, which helps us progress to new hub worlds, gems, which differ to certain amounts depending on the colour of them, and lastly, the dragon eggs, which have been stolen by these pesky blue thieves. So, let's start things off with a banger by getting our first achievement of the game. Now, every hub world has a set number of portals to each level, whilst also having actual flying levels two and the first one has a very simple puzzle to get to so to start off nice and easy to access the portal to sunny flight you have to step on each of these five stones without falling in the water and after doing that the hidden door reveals itself and we get our very first achievement of the game being hop skip and jump we then make our way into sunny flight where we obtain our next achievement so the goal of these flying levels is to destroy all eight of the four different items per level and for every item you destroy it adds to the time it required to complete the level now each of these normally have about one achievement tied to each level. So in this one you get Barnstormer for doing a loop around the arch. Best to do this after completing the level first since then you get an unlimited amount of time so then you won't have to rush and you can do it all within your own time. Next up is Stone Hill where it involves a bunch of sheep murdering. Now as you've probably seen Spyro isn't alone, he is constantly followed by his little dragonfly called Sparks who acts as our health indicator, ranging from yellow being max health to blue, green and then disappearing meaning one more hit could kill you. Now every level has non-aggressive enemies that give your health back per one you defeat and in Stone Hill by flaming 10 sheep we get the sheep kebab achievement. We then fly into Town Square where to complete this level requires you to glide to a specific ledge allowing you to collect the rest of the gems and the hidden egg thief who taunts you as you progress through this level. Now the achievement is another easy one since all you're going to do is glide off of this ledge and kind of hug the wall to your right as you glide to it. Succeeding in this will allow you to complete the rest of the level and it also gives you the leaf on the wind achievement. Next up we move on to Dark Hollow where all we have to do for this is light these two bonfires at the bottom of these steps. Doing that once you defeat the enemies here you'll get the light my fire achievement. One of the easier achievements in the game but let's be honest they are all pretty easy. Now it's time to get ready for our first boss of the game and not gonna lie it's probably one of the easiest bosses you'll ever face in any game you play. Say hello to Toasty. Now although he may be an enemy that we have to defeat he does have an achievement for us. Now I know I said that this is the easiest boss the hardest part about it is that there are three waves of dogs that you have to face per area since they take two hits per dog and can be very annoying. Once you've defeated all three waves of the dogs and flamed Toasty three times, you'll get the Burnt Toast achievement. Now, as you progress throughout the game, in each hub world, after saving a certain number of dragons, there will be a balloonist who basically takes you to any of the hub worlds that you've unlocked, pretty much acting as a fast travel system. So by using him for the first time, you'll unlock the Boom achievement. Sorry, let me add more emphasis on that. You'll unlock the 
Boom! Achievement. Is that better? Right, let's move on. Now, lastly, just a quick other thing to mention. You may notice that throughout this video, or at least for the start of it, I might have missed out a few levels or maybe a few hub worlds where there are achievements that are tied to them. In this case, I have missed some of them, but don't worry, we'll go back at the end of the game once I completed it and we'll basically do a little bit of backtracking. So we jump into the next level, which is Dry Canyon, where it's another nice and easy achievement, which is Bird Brained, by simply charging any vulture in the level. Now, you won't actually see the achievement pop for me uh, because for some reason my recording froze when I unlocked, but as you can see, I've charged this vulture it's here, so I would have got it. Next up, we have the triathlon achievement that you can get in the level Ice Cavern. Now, starting off the level, you can actually run through this level backwards. It sounds a bit weird, but just bear with me. By hugging the wall to your right and gliding to this platform with these lives on there for you. When you come across the level exit portal, by climbing these ledges, you'll end up in a cave with the three enemies that you need to defeat to get the achievement. Just follow through the cave, killing the three Norks that are gliding around on skis, and then the achievement will pop. We then jump onto our second boss of the game called Dr. Shemp, where we have to unlock the strong chest located at the end of the level. Now, as you've probably already seen, some levels have chests that you can only unlock by finding a key in that same level. So the key for this chest is located on this ledge, which you can reach by gliding over to it from this high point. The chest itself is after the boss fight, so once defeating Dr. Shemp, go past the exit portal and jump down to the ledge, unlocking the chest, and you'll get the What's in the Box achievement. Next up in Clifftown, where you can get the Birds of the Feather achievement, which is kind of similar to the Bird Brain one, but it's a little bit different in this one. Now, in this case, to get the achievement, you have to flame every vulture in Clifftown itself. Now, the only part of this level where there are vultures is by gliding from the very top of the level, or if you miss the achievement and complete the level already, there will be a whirlwind that you can retake to make it easier, which is what I did. Now, obviously, flame all seven vultures in the area and you'll get the achievement. Now, we jump into the third hub world of the game, which is Magic Crafters, where we have a very very easy achievement to get where pretty much at the start you'll find these four weirdly placed druids where just simply by charging them all in a straight line you'll get the coming through achievement see told you it was nice and easy next up is the pops of the tops achievement you'll find in alpine ridge at the end of the level you'll glide over to these three platforms that each have a fireworks box that by flaming them it will reward you with some gems now these platforms are a little bit tricky to traverse since when each box explodes if you're too close to it it will hurt you and throw you off the ledge just fly back and forth between the platforms once the fireworks have gone off and then once all three have been set off you'll get the achievement now this next achievement is quite unique since it's the first time that you're actually introduced to a new power for spyro so in the level high caves you'll find these armored spiders which are invincible to both your flame and your charge so you have to go about it a different way now the reason why this is such a unique level is that during it you'll find this supercharged ramp that you can use to actually defeat some of these spiders but not all of them as you dive deeper into this cave you can use the small platforms the game gives you to unaggro the spiders so that you you can make your way up to this fairy that's waiting for you. Now, because Spyro is the coolest purple dragon that there is, she gives you a little peck, giving you the super flame ability, which for a limited time, your flame will kill anything within one shot, including the spiders. There are a total of five of them, so once you've defeated all of them, you'll get the Arachnophobe achievement. We now move on to our next flying level being Crystal Flight, where in this level, our aim is to flame the two directional fairies that are placed to basically help you find the best route required to complete the level within the time limit. Now, don't forget, completing the level first of all, that will then give you an unlimited amount of time, and then that way you won't feel rushed to try and get this achievement. Now, the best way I can kind of explain the route in getting these two fairies is if you follow the arches after the first and the seventh arch that you fly through, you'll end up finding both of the fairies. Simply just flame them, and then once you've done both of them, you will get the Hot Wings 2 achievement. Now, you're thinking Hot Wings 2? Where was Hot Wings 1? Now, this is actually a previous achievement in one of the other levels that I've missed, but as I said, don't worry, we will get back to that at some point so as i said at the beginning of the video there are three different types of items that you'll be collecting throughout the entire game one of them being the dragon eggs now with this achievement you don't need to worry about collecting all of them you just need to worry about one specific egg and that is jumping into wizard's peak that we will end up finding so as you can see on screen using these two supercharged wraps together you'll end up propelling yourself over and gliding to this platform as you can see with these gems on now, don't be so quick to jump off the ledge before actually checking behind it. As you can see, one of these egg fees are hiding behind it and simply by flaming him, you will then get the egg hunt achievement. Next up, we have the gatherer achievement, which if you're going for all the gems in the game and for the 100%, as obviously you, if you're watching this video, you'll end up getting this quite naturally. 
So we enter the level Blowhard. Now, yes, that is the name that the developers came up with. I can already tell that some of you are getting at it. Come on, grow up, stop it. Anyway, back to the achievement. It's fairly simple. Just collect all 400 gems in this level and the achievement will pop. Now, this level is quite a linear path, so I don't think that you'll really miss any gems. But don't forget, if you do happen to miss any, simply by clicking in on the right analog stick, Sparks will actually point you in the direction of any gems that you've missed. Now, onto our first level of this fourth hub world being Misty Bog, where there seems to be a civilian in peril. Say hello to Kevin. No, that's not his actual name, but that's what I'm going to call him. Now, he may seem like a regular looking chicken, but he is much more than that. He has a much bigger purpose, and that purpose is he has an achievement for us. Now, all you have to do is to simply free Kevin from this cage. So just let him get trapped by the snork, thus being able to free him. Now, as you can see on the screen, I did actually accidentally kill Kevin and then broke the cage, but the achievement still popped for me. So I guess you can do what you want with him. Once you get it, you'll get the caged free achievement. Now, the next level slash achievement can be quite tricky. So I'll try to explain this as clear as I can. In this one, we are going for the I believe it is time for me to fly achievement, which basically requires you to complete wild flight without touching the ground. Now, I can't really show the path that I took since mine was a very messed up route and I was all over the place. To be honest, I'm surprised I managed to do this first time, but you know. So my only sole advice for this level is try and focus on the chests and the planes first since they are on a very similar path. Then after that, move on to the arches and boats since they are also on their similar paths. And then that way you should have no problem getting the achievement. Now we move on to probably the hardest achievement in this game. And for all of you Spyro fanatics, you remember this next level and not for the right reasons. Welcome to Treetops, the hardest level in the game if you're going for the 100%. So this achievement for this level is simply just by jumping off every single supercharged ramp. Easy, right? Now, like most people, as you just play throughout this level, you probably will get the launch date achievement just by random, but I'm actually gonna show you how to 100% this level since that is actually needed for an achievement later on. So this level has two thieves, both holding a purple gem, and they ain't in the easiest places to reach, I'll tell you that. Both areas actually require you to use multiple supercharged ramps to reach each location, and the routes that you have to take are not the clearest. So to make it as easy as I can, and me just explaining it, I'll show you the route to the yellow thief and then the harder one, which is the red thief. As you can see, it was a lot easier showing you the routes than explaining them, so thank me later for when the 100% achievement pops at the end. We now tackle our next boss level called Metalhead, which is pretty much the exact same goal that Blowhard's level has. I apologize for mentioning that name again, but you know, I had no choice. So yeah, we need to collect every single gem in this level to get the achievement gems in the rough. Now, I'd say that there are two areas that are very well hidden that you may not figure out straight away. Now, the first kind of hidden area that you need to get to is you glide down to this ledge and you end up fitting through this gate, which will lead you to more gems, the chest key required for the level, and then there's a whirlwind that lets you glide to the high ledges at the start of the game that you may have missed. Then in the final area where you defeat Metalhead, there are some stairs that you can take which will lead you to the chest hidden behind the waterfall. Following those correct steps, you should be 100% done with the level and the achievement should pop. We now move on to our final main hub area of the game being Dreamweavers. Now we have a fairly similar situation to what we had before, where again we have a certain number of enemies lined up just teasing us for another achievement. And if you remember back to Magic Crafters then you know what we have to do. Next up we have Dark Passage, where in this level you need to flame three of the demon dogs in large form, which basically means that these jokers with the lanterns are changing the size of the enemies. Now, as you can see, you can only charge the turtles while they were small, but the dogs themselves, you can flame them no matter what size that they are. So yeah, as I said, nice and easy, flame three of them, and then you'll get the bad doggies achievement. Now, onto the last flying level that I played being Icy Flight. Now, we do have a previous flying level to return to, but as I said, we'll get back to that later. 
Now, it's the same task as one of the previous levels where you basically have to complete it without touching the ground. Now, this level is actually a lot easier than the previous one that I messed up on. Your first goal is to flame all of the lanterns and then destroy the chests since they are pretty much all next to each other. Next up, you want to fly against the trains, which they will basically lead you to the two areas that have the helicopters. That should be kind of the route that you want to take. And then once you get all of them, you'll get the fly like an eagle achievement. Next up, we have the level Haunted Towers, which will give us the achievement Scrap Metal, where we have a very similar situation like the Metal Spiders early on in the game. In this level, though, you have these invincible Metal Knights that can only be killed with the Super Flame power-up, which you only have for a limited amount of time, so you better be quick about it. Now, the achievement requires you to destroy all of the Knights, which you may think is easy enough, but there is actually a part to this level which is quite difficult to get to if you don't know the way. Now, I'll show you the exact pathing to it, since it's probably easier to show than explain. When you manage to make your way over to the hidden area, make sure that you be quick and run past all the knights before they animate, otherwise that you'll have to run out of the room and despawn them. After that, you'll get the super flame ability for an unlimited amount of time, so as long as that these are the, your last set of knights to kill, the achievement should pop. Now, if you are still missing some in any of the areas in the level, don't forget, use your sparks ability to find the last sets of gems, as each knight actually gives you a gem every single time you kill them, so that way you can be very thorough on your search. Onto the final boss level of the game, obviously ignoring Nasty Nork, being Jacques, which kind of sounds like my name in a bit of a bad French accent if you think about it. Now, in one of the areas of this level, after you free the dragon Unica, there will be a whirlwind platform which will throw you into four enemies, which by flaming them in one glide, you will end up getting the Jacques Tacular achievement. Yeah, might have butchered how you said that, but. You know what I mean. Now, as you saw, I did actually end up hitting the second platform mid glide, so I'm not sure if my game bugged out, but if you don't do it first time, you can just end up killing yourself and it will spawn you at the dragon that you collected earlier. Right, now the time has come. It's straight onto Nasty Nork. Now, I have missed some of the achievements in the previous levels in Nasty's Hub World, but don't worry, we'll get back to those later. Now, weirdly enough, this is probably the easiest boss out of the entire game, even excluding Toasty. And yes, I know that I did say that he is the easiest that you'll ever face, but come on, they're all easy. Give me a break. So this achievement is more tedious than it is difficult since all you basically have to do is during the first chase sequence with Nasty Nork, instead of flaming him where he stands still on his pedestal, if you actually end up waiting, he will run away and repeat the same path that you just chased him on. Easy enough, doing five laps of this chase, you'll end up getting the drag on and on and on achievement. Obviously, I won't show me running around the same path five times, but you get what I mean. And just like that, Nasty Nork is defeated. We end up yeeting the sheep away because, you know, this is our victory. Then the credits end up rolling, but of course we are not done yet. Now at this point, if you ended up completing every level, getting every possible item in the game, there is a secret bonus level that will unlock. Now this level is probably the uniquest out of the entire game. The reason for this is that this level actually gives you infinite flight, but only to a certain point. You'll notice that you can't fly up higher at certain times, you'll have to go a different way about it. Now, there is a certain height in which you can fly at, and the only way to raise that invisible line is by climbing any set of stairs that you can find that allows you to access them. Alongside that, there are only gems to pick up in this level, so don't worry about any dragons. And to top all of it off, we have some more pesky thieves who have stolen some keys this time to allow us to progress through the level. Now, once you take out all of the thieves, gain all of the treasure and make it up to the exit portal, the room behind the exit portal is actually Nasty's treasure room, which I've always had that satisfying feeling of letting all of these firework boxes explode and collecting the purple gems all at once. See, did you just enjoy watching that? Now, that would have been even better if that was the last treasure pop the achievement, but with me being a bit of an idiot, I may have missed two chests. Whoops. Anyway, we smash them open, and then with that, we get the Hoarder achievement for collecting all 2,000 gems. And just like that, Sparrow gives an endgame interview in some sick-ass shades, if I do say so myself. And then the game ends very weirdly with the dragons being turned back into crystal, as if the second game was going to have the same concept, but eventually didn't, but I'm intrigued as to why. Anyway, now that is Spyro the Dragon finished, but obviously we haven't got the Platinum just yet, so we've got to return to some of the previous levels and do a bit of cleanup. 
Now we return back to Beast Makers, which you may have spotted some glowing mushrooms scattered all around the world when we first visited this level. Now you have to end up flaming all five of them to get the achievement. And I guess some of these are very well hidden, but they are fairly easy to get. As always, just to make it easier, here are the five locations for them. And after flaming the fifth one, you'll end up getting the Mushroom Hunter achievement. Next up, we fly back to Nork Cove, which is one of the two areas that was actually in Nasty Nork's hub world, which we missed originally. Where in this level, the achievement that you have to get is pretty simple and pretty easy. All you have to do is get through the entire level without flaming any of the rats that give you your health back. As I said, it's pretty easy to avoid all of them. Just get to the end portal and then the achievement Rat-tastic will pop. Then we have the achievement Rocketeer by flaming the three fireworks in the level Terrace Village. But then you have to end up doing this within the 15 seconds, which to be honest, isn't that difficult. The time is quite easy to accomplish. Simply just fly off this top ledge that allows you to get to these higher platforms that has the two fireworks on it. Then once you flame those two, drop down onto this third one and you'll get the achievement. It was slightly delayed for me, but just give it a couple seconds and it will eventually unlock. Now onto the last three achievements of the game. So we are getting very close to this 100%. Next up, we have Twilight Harbor being the second level that we missed in Nasty Nork's area, where there are six gears hidden all around this level. And to be honest, I had to actually look some of these up because some of them were very well hidden since I genuinely went through this level three times and was still missing two of them. Now to make it easier for you guys, I'm just gonna whiz through them and show you all six locations of where the gears are. After flaming the sixth gear, you will get the what really grinds my gear achievement. And yes, that achievement did relate to how I was feeling at the time. Now we return all the way back to Peacekeepers, where if you remember these noughts from earlier on in the game, which you may have seen a bit too much, since I do remember this game being very family friendly, but of course you've got these guys ruining it by flashing us. So obviously we've got to put a stop to it and make sure that the kids don't see this. Jump onto the cannon behind you and by using it, eliminate this cheeky nork and you will get the shoot the moon achievement. Returning back to Night Flight, where we pretty much have a repeated achievement similar to Hot Wings 2, as I mentioned earlier, called Hot Wings 1. So that means we've got to flame more fairies. Now, these fairies are a bit more difficult to find, so it'd be easy to show you my pathing to get the achievement. And here we are, onto the very final achievement of the game. Now, as I said earlier, the moment would be a lot cooler if I was hunting trophies, but nonetheless, I ended it on an easy one. Now, back in Lofty Castle, there are some puffer birds, which seem to be in a situation that we have seen quite a couple times before. So you know what we gotta do. We line them up, charge the absolute heck out of them, and then just like that, we unlock the all puffed out achievement. And boom, just like that, we are done. Well, with the first game, that is. Obviously, we have two more to do in the Reignited Trilogy, but we will focus on that another time. Now, as I said in the beginning, since there wasn't much of a story to this game, I had to focus solely on just the methods that I used to get the achievements. So if you think that this video was helpful for you in 100%ing Spyro, then I clearly did a good job then. Now, I am currently working on some other Platinums, so if you do have any suggestions in future Plats that you would like to see, then make sure you comment on the video and let me know. Now, obviously, if you did like the video itself, make sure you actually give it a like. Now, if you want to see more Platinum Hunts on the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you want to see Spyro 2 and also Spyro 3 at some point in the future be Platinum, then obviously let me know. This has been the Spyro the Dragon Platinum Hunt. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.